I'm going to be looking at two very underrated characters in the Bible. Two of David's mighty men. In 2 Samuel 23, it lays out David's mighty men. And these are men who not only have the title of a soldier or warrior, but they also act like true soldiers and warriors. This can uh, picture our standing and our state. Because in Christ, when it comes to my standing, I'm sanctified once and for all. I'm a member or soldier of the Lord's army, and that's how God sees me. My state is an another story. I don't need to just claim the title of a soldier. I need to sanctify myself and act like one. There's no doubt about it. I'm I'm saved. I'm in the Lord's army. Now I need to act like I am. I need to sanctify myself. And in 2 Samuel 23, 9 through 12, you have two underrated characters, Shema and Eliezer. And they illustrate what it means to not only be set apart with the title of a soldier, but also to set yourself apart and act like a soldier. And if you're even if you're the only man standing, you still act like a soldier. So let's concentrate on Eliezer and Shema and the word sanctification. And sanctification means you're set apart for a special use. And the first thing about Shema and Eliezer is they were separated from the people. So look at 2 Samuel 23, 2 Samuel 23 and verse 9. It says, And after him was Eliezer, the son of Dodo, the Ahohite, one of the three mighty men with David, when they defied the Philistines that were gathered together to battle, and the men of Israel were gone away. See that? The men of Israel were gone away. And he arose and smote the Philistine until his hand was weary, and his hand clave into the sword, and the Lord wrought a great victory that day, and the people returned after him only to spoil. So the men of Israel were gone away, but he stood and smote the Philistines until his hand was weary. Then look at Shema, verse 11, And after him was Shema, the son of Agi, the Herorot, and the Philistines were gathered together into a troop, where was a piece of ground full of lentils, and the people fled from the Philistines. But he stood in the midst of the ground and defended it and slew the Philistines. And the Lord wrought a great victory. So they sanctified themselves. They separated from the people. They sanctified themselves. Eliezer and Shema were mighty men. They had that title. But they also acted as mighty men. That made them stick out from the crowd. You see, my standing in Christ is sanctified once and forever. My state is another story because I have to sanctify myself and my spiritual walk daily. Just like 1 Corinthians 15, 31. In 1 Corinthians 15, and verse 31, it says, I protest for your rejoicing, which I have in Christ Jesus our Lord. I die daily. Then look at Romans 6 and verse 11. Romans 6, 11 says, Likewise you reckon ye also yourselves to be dead, and to sin, indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. You got to reckon yourselves dead. You got to die daily. Every morning when you get up, say, I'm not doing what the flesh wants me to do. I'm not serving this dead corpse. I'm doing what God would have me do. My standing is that I'm a soldier in the Lord's army. I signed up when I got saved. Now I need to act like one. Both Eliezer and Shema were separate from the people. 2 Samuel 23, 9 said the men of Israel were gone away. 2 Samuel 23, 11 says the people fled from the Philistines. So they were both alone. To be sanctified... You're going the opposite way of the world and sadly even of most Christians. 
even they are worldly. You have to come out from among them, which isn't too hard sometimes because you're running to the fight and they're running for cover. To be sanctified, you can't conform to the world. You have to be transformed by the renewing of your renewing of your mind. Romans twelve two, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove was that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So, to fellowship with most Christians today, a lot of times you have to backslide first, but be like Shema, and you press toward the mark. Philippians three fourteen. Just like Paul said in Philippians 3, 14, where he said, Philippians 3, 14, he says, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. So you're pressing toward the mark. You don't want to go backwards, going back to like you used to be. You want to press toward the mark. Shema was working in the field, so he probably didn't have his armor on. At the time. He was just out in that pea patch. He probably didn't even have his armor on. But he put on the whole armor of God. Just like me and you. You couldn't see his armor. You can't see our armor. But we have separated ourselves. Putting off the old man. And I've put on the, put on the new man. We've put on that armor of Ephesians 6. We've put off the old man. Ephesians 4.24. Colossians 3.10. If you're going to be sanctified, you have to strip yourself of the old man. Ephesians 4, 24. In Ephesians 4, in verse 24, it says, And that you put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. You put on the new man, and you stand. So they sanctified themselves. There was something different about these guys. They sanctified themselves, and there's something different about these guys. They were sanctified, set apart. Shema was different than all the other people in that pea patch. He was peculiar, just like it says we ought to be in 1 Peter 2, 9. In 1 Peter 2 and verse 9, it says, But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that you should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. So he's just out there working in that field. Here come the Philistines over that hill. Everybody else takes off, starts running for cover, doesn't give it a second thought, but he stands. There's something different about him compared to all these other people in that field. He's the oddball. And if you're acting like a soldier in the Lord's army, you're going to be the oddball. It's like Paul says, endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. So think about Eliezer as well. He was not your average run-of-the-mill soldier. He was determined. He didn't conform to what his fellow soldiers did. The men of Israel were gone away. He didn't conform to what the men of Israel were doing. People will think you're crazy. They probably thought he was crazy. They're like, why are you not running? They probably thought Shema was crazy. Why is he not running? He doesn't even have his, his gear. He's been out here working. He doesn't even have his gear to fight the Philistines. You see, people will think you're crazy just so I can... Uh, Acts 26, 24, Festus told Paul, he said, Much learning doth make thee mad. In Mark 3, 21, they thought Jesus was beside himself. In Hosea 9, 7, it says, The prophet is a fool, the spiritual man is mad. Most, most likely, everybody thought Shema and Eliezer had a death wish and that they were crazy. And this will be one of the costs of a sanctified life. You're doing so much different than everybody else. They just can't fathom why you're doing what you're doing. So they separated from the people. Sanctified themselves. There's something different about these guys. 
The next thing is they're soldiers that don't clock out. They never did clock out. Let's just read it again. It's such good verses here. And after him was Eliezer, the son of Dodo, the Ahohite, one of the three mighty men with David, when they defied the Philistines that were gathered together to battle, and the men of Israel were gone away. He arose and smote the Philistines until his hand was weary, and his hand clave unto the sword, and the Lord wrought a great victory that day, and the people were turned after him only to spoil. And after him was Shema, the son of Agi the Herorite. And the Philistines were gathered together into a troop, where was a piece of ground full of lentils, and the people fled from the Philistines. But he stood in the midst of the ground and defended it, and slew the Philistines, and the Lord wrought a great victory. You see, they're soldiers that don't clock out. With a sword in hand. Soldiers that don't clock out with a sword in hand. Eliezer could have run off duty like everyone else, but he worked overtime and his hand clave unto the sword. His hand would have felt funny when he put that sword down because it clave to it. Just like, you know, you think about those verses where it says, a man shall leave father and, father and mother and cleave unto his wife. And then if something happened to his wife or he was without his wife, he feels funny. That's the way it ought to be with your sword. Your hand ought to cleave to the sword. Become one with the sword. And then if you don't have it, you feel funny. Sometimes in my day job, I work so long and hard in a freezer with work boots, work boots on that it takes a while to adjust to the casual shoes and the warm weather. When I got home, when I go home, it's like that. I bet that's what it's like when he had his sword. When he finally had to put down that sword, it was probably like his hand was just froze that way, in that position that it was in. If you're going to be sanctified, the only way to get that way is to keep the sword in hand. Hebrews 4:12. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow, and as a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. you got to keep that sword in hand to the point to where if you have a day without it, you would feel funny. And you don't even look right without it. It doesn't say anything about Shema having a sword like Eliezer. This could be a picture of a Christian who can fight the good fight without the sword in hand because he has it hidden in his heart. And if you're ever going to be sanctified, it must be through the word consistently running through you. In Ephesians 5.26, talking about the Lord in the church, it says in Ephesians 5.26 that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. It has to be the word running through you. You see, these were soldiers that didn't clock out. They could have ran and hid, got off the clock like everybody else. It seems Shema was doing his side job, and he was still a soldier, a soldier 24-7. That's the next thing. Soldiers... That don't clock out. A sword in hand. Striving 24-7. Shema was caught off guard. He wasn't in a battle situation. You see, he, he was caught off guard. He was, he was down there working. He wasn't even in a battle situation. Yet, he was still walking circumspectly. Just like it says in Ephesians 5.15. Walking circumspectly. Not as fools, but as wise. He was vigilant, just like it says in 1 Peter 5, 8, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil has a roaring lion walketh about seeking whom he may devour. See, this is a big difference than most Christians today when they are caught off guard because it seems they clock out of the Lord's army through the week. When they go to work, they're clocking out of the Lord's army and they're caught off guard many times. Most of God's people today aren't living a sanctified life outside of Sunday services there are a lot of Christians who, if you caught them at work, they wouldn't know enough about the scriptures to help anybody 
to fight a spiritual battle or even have an intelligent conversation about a spiritual things or the Bible. So to the Philistines, Shema probably didn't even look like a soldier, but they found out that he was. Today, many Christians will look the part, but they seldom act the part. You should live a sanctified life, not only in your suit and tie, but also in your work uniform. Shema, he was out there in that pea patch. Probably didn't even have his armor on, but he was striving 24-7 contending for the faith 24-7. He was a soldier that didn't clock out. And the next thing is they served their purpose. They stood their ground. They stood fast in the faith. They did all to stand. It says Shema stood in the midst of the ground and defended it. He showed them it wasn't up for grabs. He showed them that he was a worthy vessel for the Lord to bring a great victory through. He served his purpose. And if you're a soldier in the Lord's army, you have a specific purpose that God is wanting to use you to accomplish. While living a sanctified life, you have to realize that there are enemies who will desire to take it away. They want to take away your sanctified life. First and foremost, your flesh wants to take it away. But you counter him by walking in the Spirit. You walk in the Spirit, you will not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. Galatians 5, 16 through 26, you see that. The next enemy is Satan himself. Don't give in, and he'll leave you alone for a while. Resist the devil, and he'll flee from you. James 4, 7. The next enemy is the world. For now, they have home field advantage, because just like 2 Corinthians 4, 4 says, it's the God of this world. We're on their home field right now. They got home field advantage. But remember, you stand your ground now like Shema so that it will really become your ground later because he's coming to take over. And if you suffer with the Lord now, Second Timothy 2.12 explains, says if you suffer with him, you're going to reign with him. So when we stand our ground against all the fiery darts of the wicked and the wiles of the devil and temptations of the flesh and the course of this world, we also show that we are a vessel unto honor. 2 Timothy 2.21, If a man therefore purge himself from these, all these uh, bad things that was listed, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified and meet for the master's use and prepared unto every good work. You see, you may not be the best thing in the world, but you can be a vessel unto honor every day, striving 24-7, serving your purpose, standing your ground. Look back at Second Samuel 23 and verse 11 or verse 12. It says, but he stood in the midst of the ground and defended it. He stood. He didn't run back. He, they stood their ground. If you're going to serve your purpose, you have to stand your ground. And the next thing, spoils weren't their main interest. Second Samuel 23, 12 says, But he stood in the midst of the ground and defended it and slew the Philistines with a great... And slew the Philistines, and the Lord wrought a great victory... And then look at verse 11. Or no, look at verse 10. He arose and smote the Philistines until his hand was weary, and his hand clave to the sword, and the Lord wrought a great victory that day, and the people returned after him only to spoil. That was their main interest. In Second Samuel 23, 10, after Eliezer had wiped out the enemies, the people returned only to spoil. They didn't want the fight but they wanted the prize that came after the fight, after the victory. This shows their mind was on earthly things. Shema and Eliezer, they weren't fighting for the spoil. They were fighting for the Lord. If you're spending your life chasing temporal things like the spoil, the stuff you get from the enemy after the war, what's in their pockets and stuff you just get along the way, then you're chasing temporal things you're spending your life chasing temporal things 
you're not really living a sanctified life, but a worldly one. Colossians 3, 2. Just like in Colossians 3, in verse 2, it says, Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. Matthew 6 and verse 20. Very good verse here. Matthew 6 and verse 20. It says, But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through and steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. It said in verse 19, Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth, where moth and rust doth corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. The enemy could come right back and break through and steal that spoil right back. But it couldn't take away what Eliezer and Shema had done. The Lord wrought a great victory through them. That was forever written down. That couldn't be taken away. Shema and Eliezer weren't fighting for the spoil. 2 Corinthians 4.18 says, While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. You don't see the reward and the benefits and the prizes for a sanctified life right now, but you're going to when you get to the judgment seat of Christ. So Shema and Eliezer were already soldiers. They were already considered mighty men, yet they continued to fight and act like a soldier. We should be the same way. We're already saved. We're already sealed. We're already sanctified. We have the title of a Christian, but we should back up that title and sanctify ourselves every day. Not just talk the talk, walk the walk. Not just claim the title. Not just profess to be a Christian, but act like one too. Just like Paul said, let him, let anyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. We know we, we need to do works that are we need to do works meet for repentance. We need to do works that would match somebody who's that they would that would match somebody who's claiming to be saved. You don't do good works to get saved. You don't do good works to stay saved. You really can't do good works to even prove that you're saved. But you need to be doing works, such good works to the point where somebody would say, I believe that person is a Christian. Even though I don't believe in, you know, claiming somebody's saved or not based on the works that they're doing, you need to be doing works that would match somebody who is professing to be a godly person. You're sanctifying yourself, you're being set apart. Just like them, they separated from the people. They sanctified themselves. They didn't run away. They didn't just act like everybody else. There was something different about these guys. They're soldiers that didn't clock out. They had the sword in hand, striving 24-7, served their purpose, stood their ground. Spoils weren't their main interest. They had their affection set on things above. They set their affection on things above. So that's Shema and Eliezer, two great Bible warriors that you just don't hear much about. But they're two of the greatest characters in the Bible.